Hey folks, welcome back. So today uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit of work on uh, this thing. Uh, I picked this up yesterday. It's a uh, 1978 Circle J, well, technically a horse trailer, but uh, for me, it's gonna be a, a livestock trailer. It's a uh, 16 foot and it's actually got a little tack room in the front of it as well. Uh, the lower part you can put like saddles and stuff like that and then the upper part is uh, like a hay area that can be accessed from this front uh, front half of the trailer. Now of course the main reason I'm wanting this is for hauling cattle. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting some here in the pretty near future. But before that it's probably going to end up getting used for pigs. And previously what I'd used for pigs was this thing. Which as you can imagine, uh, this isn't exactly the easiest thing to use because of course uh, if you're going to put animals in there you got to add something up and over the top to keep them from just hopping right up and over the sides. It's only probably two foot tall along the sides and that would be nothing for a pig just to jump right over that thing no problem. In addition to that, the uh, axle on this thing is getting a little bit messed up and if you get too much weight in it, uh, it actually starts to bend the wheel in just a little bit and if it's enough that wheel will rub well actually the tire will rub on a certain bolt that's in there and it blows the tire out don't ask me how i know um fortunately that never happened when i had pigs in there it was some other stuff but point is uh that thing's not exactly the easiest thing to use and obviously that would definitely not work for hauling cattle which is why i got this thing instead so quick walk around of the thing we got a uh sliding half door on it. This is one thing that'll be really nice, I think, for the pigs. Uh, just having a smaller or even a uh, adjustable size opening here. And that way, as you're trying to push the pigs onto the trailer, you can just have a real narrow chute that's leading onto here. Uh, something small enough that they aren't able to turn around and try pushing back. They just have to go straight forward, load them right down to here. So this is really, really handy for this. And then, if you're loading cattle, you can swing the whole thing open, make it nice and easy to get, uh, don't you do it, uh, nice and easy to get uh, larger animals moved into here. Then, inside, because this thing's a little bit longer, it's also got a middle divider here where you can divide the front and the back, um, get those separated from each other. And then we've also got another door here up at the front. So um, I think this is more maybe of a horse feature, um, but I think it could definitely come in handy for loading other animals as well to where you can, uh, like if you're leading a horse in, you can bring them in and then you can go out this door instead of having to go back past the animal that you just loaded. Uh, so this, this is another nice little handy thing to have on here as well. And then, like I mentioned before, uh, it's got this little hay area up here above, and then the, uh, the tack, tack room area is below uh, where this shelf is that you can put some hay in here. And then, like I said, this is just a little tack room in here, and this is a little shelf thing that you can put your saddles on. There's some hooks and stuff. Not quite sure if I've got any use for that or not, but it's there and uh, I've got it if I ever need it. That's for throwing some hay up there, I think. So one nice thing about this being a horse trailer uh, and not a cattle trailer of the same vintage uh, is that I think it's probably been taken care of a little bit better than a lot of cattle trailers were uh, from the same uh, age and the reason i think that is that often for a lot of cattle trailers they start rusting out really bad down along this bottom edge and i think that's just from getting manure and stuff on it and then it never gets washed off and that eats away at the metal rusts it out um, and a lot of them get really bad along the sides this one's really not too bad at all there is some rust along through there the trailer actually has been repainted at some point. This isn't the original color that it was, but it's clearly been taken care of a little bit better than uh, a lot of other ones that I've seen in the same age range and price range. So one thing that I did check before I bought the trailer was I wanted to check 
uh, the wheels, make sure there wasn't any wonky bearings because I was pulling this about an hour and a half from the place that I bought it. And all four of the wheels do have just a little bit of play in it, which I think can be uh, taken out if we pop the little caps off in there and then tighten down the little castle nut. There should be a little castle nut inside each one of those. And just add maybe a quarter turn, half turn on there, and I think that'll remove the play out of that. And it should eliminate any issues with having the wheels moving a little bit and getting premature wear on the tires or anything of that nature. So let's grab the jack and see if we can't uh, do something about that. What I want to do is pop this cotter pin out of here and then as you can see that nut right there is pretty uh, pretty easily moved there. So I think if we turn that down just a little bit more that should take the play out of this wheel and all the rest of them. Just going to clean up a little bit of this grease that's around here Let's see what we're doing better. Should be quite that uh, quite that loose. <laughs> okay, let's see if this thing feels any better. There's still just a tiny little bit. It's not as bad as it was before. I guess I'll leave it for now. We'll move on to the next one. When I get that off, I'll look at it and see if I've got something that's the right size. And if I do, I'll come back to this one and tighten it down another, just one more position on that, that nut. And then uh, we'll, we'll call it good. But if I don't have anything, I don't, I don't know that I'd be able to get that turned down the rest of the way or any further. Okay, so I got smart, finally, and uh, I realized that I didn't need the, uh, it's like a 1 in 15, 30 seconds uh, <laughs> wrench or uh, socket to fit on there. And all I really needed was just to use this and the hammer and tap on it. And because it's a castle nut, it's got those grooves in it, and I could just rest this on there and just use that to tighten it up just a little bit further. And this one, well, you're hearing the door up here, but this one doesn't have any play in it, even though that one still has a little. So we're going to take this one back off, tighten that back down, and uh, see if we can't get that one good and solid. There's no wiggle in that at all. Oh, I like that a lot better. All right, now to do the other side. All right, let's see uh, see how quick we can do this one. Now that I know what I'm doing. All right, well, 15 minutes, that's not too bad to get it jacked up, two wheels off, tighten both castle nuts and get both of them back on again. I'm not sure it was any faster than the other side because I had to uh, use the wrench to get all but one of the, the lug nuts off in there, but uh, 
at least it looked like I knew what I was doing a little bit better than that side. But they all definitely feel a whole lot better than they did before. There's no play in them now. And I think that should be better for the, the wheels, tires, everything on here to uh, not have that little bit of movement in there. All right, so one thing that's kind of been bugging me with this trailer is that on this, this back corner here, uh, at some point, somebody didn't quite do the best job of backing and it kind of dented this uh, little brace in. And I know it's a 45 year old trailer. It's not in perfect condition. It's got a little rust on it. It's been painted a time or two. And uh, this really has no effect on the structural or mechanical uh, well-being of the trailer, but it kind of bugs me. And I think I might be able to pull that out. So what I've got, I got a chain binder here and some chain. We're gonna hook onto there. And then we're gonna hook on to the back of the skid steer and hopefully uh, it'll be able to pull this out. It may not. Uh, we may start pulling the whole trailer forward. Um, so at that point, I'll have to uh, try hooking it up to the truck, which it's not currently, but we'll see if we can pull it without uh, hooking it up first. I couldn't find the sledgehammer, so uh, maybe uh, maybe this will do something. Oh, I don't think that's got enough weight. Well, that was interesting. Didn't see that one coming. Hmm. Okay, let's try something different. All right, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but there's a pretty good little bend right here. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make a little cut right through here and then flatten these out because it kind of comes out like that right, right here. I can cut that, get those flat. I'll probably have to cut just a little bit out of there to make that match up nice and, and straight down through there and then run a weld across there um, to... Uh, meet those those cut edges back up again and give a nice solid uh nice solid angle piece going down through there and that should get it fairly you know flat along here and then flat along this plane as well so i don't have the truck out here at the moment to uh, continue messing with this uh, dented support brace thing over here um, but one thing i can do is get this license plate swapped out uh, the, uh, I actually picked it up from a guy in Virginia, but he had just recently moved from West Virginia, so that's why it's got that. And I've got, I think, what should be my brand new plate in here to uh, swap it out to. All right, Virginia permanent trailer. I gotta say, the, uh, the West Virginia one sure is a lot more, uh, more colorful. It looks a little nicer, but I guess you get what you pay for, huh? Actually, I might have just screwed up. <laughs> uh, I was thinking it would be easier to do it this way so that the, uh, the nut was on the back. I had a nice flat surface to turn that against, but I'm not sure if the door is going to uh, gonna clear those little holes. Yeah, they kind of hit, don't they? Uh, hmm. Well, you know what? When, uh, when we pull it over towards the mill house to work on this, we're going to have the grinder out to cut through that, and we'll just cut off that extra little bit of, little bit of bolt sticking past the nut there, and that, that'll take care of it, and then I don't have to pull this back off again. All right, so I'm going to see if we can't get this thing wrapped up here today, getting this thing all fixed up and ready to go. The first thing I want to do is actually not something I've said before, and that is I want to see if I can't get some grease up here on the top of this uh, half sliding door and see if that'll make it open and shut a little bit easier because right now it's it's kind of a pain to get it shuffled off to the side. Well, that would have been a lot easier, wouldn't it? 
do it from the inside. <laughs> oh well. Alright, next I'm going to nip off the backs of these bolts here so that they quit catching on the center post in here when I'm trying to open and shut this side door. Oh, and if you keep on hearing a tick, tick, tick noise, that's the uh, the fence energizer. It's like 10 feet that away. I know, it's a little bit annoying, but uh, it's just, just the way it is. almost think I need to hit it over here when it's under tension. It's gonna screw the paint up over there though. But it's already kind of cracked around in that area. I'm gonna have to do something in this area too, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. Broke the bulb. <laughs> that gummit. That glass all over the place. Shoot. It would help if I had the right wrench, but that would make it too easy. You know what? That looks pretty good to me. Good as new, almost. Alright, so I've got a few more welds that I need to do, and I'm kind of wondering if maybe these got broken at the same time that that got dented in, because this panel right here, as you can see, you got one, two, three, four, five, well, you can't even see that top one, can you? you can't, top two. There's six welds along here where this panel was welded onto this sliding door, and all of those have gotten broken. Um, so not quite sure but my guess would be that was the same time as this this little brace over here in the corner so i need to get this kind of pushed back over i should have left it the way it was it was up nice and tight but push back over re-weld all these up through here to make sure that's good and solid need more light. Boy, that is ugly well down there. Yeah. They're on top too, aren't they? Yeah, I guess that one and that one are both cracked too. It's 
not pretty, but I think it'll hold. And if it doesn't hold, I can always come back and do it again. Hopefully better next time. Alrighty folks, well, I think that is going to do it for the trailer for now. Um, I am going to pick up some paint and cover up those areas where I kind of ground it down and, and weld it and stuff like that, try and protect those a little bit more. Um, I don't have that on hand at the moment, so I can't do it. And I kind of want to wrap up uh, working on this trailer, get this video done and out. Uh, and I'm planning on using this trailer tomorrow. Whether or not anything will come back with me in it, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I am needing to, to get this thing moved out of from down here near the mill house and uh, put it to use tomorrow. Maybe. Hopefully. So that is going to be it for today's video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you next time.